Hello baseball fans, this is King Ikibu coming to you live from Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Where today we're going to play our 1930-1968 challenge using Dombrov Baseball. And we're going to feature the 1930 Boston Braves versus the 1968 Atlanta Braves. And this is probably a good chance, your first look at Dombrov Baseball. And we are going to play this. I'm going to explain a little bit about the game. Uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit like inside pitch in that the pitch goes through the pitcher onto the batter. So there's a very good possibility that the pitcher determines the at-bat. But most of the time it seems like the determination goes from the pitcher to the batter and the batter decides the at-bat. Um, there's two cards. Both pitcher and the batter have a card. I cannot bring them up for you. From what I see so far, it uh, the, the program I'm using to record doesn't allow windows to pop up, so I can't show you. But I think that's the difference between this and inside pitch is that I think the batter has more of a determination than the pitcher does. Unlike inside pitch where I think the pitcher has more of a determination. But we're going to play this game. Um, the Boston Braves were sixth place in the National League in 1930, and the Braves were somewhere around there too. So this is a good early matchup. For the Boston Braves, batting first and playing shortstop is Rabbit Marinville. Batting second, the right fielder Lance Richborg. Batting third, the star of the team, one of the underrated stars of the 1930s, Wally Berger in the left. Batting fourth, the first baseman, George Sisler. Batting fifth, the catcher, Al Sporer. Batting six, sixth, the center fielder, Jimmy Walsh. Batting seventh, the third baseman, Buster Chatham. And batting eighth, the second baseman, Freddie McGuire. And the starting pitcher for Boston, Sox Seabold. I like when there's two different cities in the same franchise. They don't have to say 30s and 68s. I can say Boston and Atlanta. For the Atlanta Braves. Leading off and playing first base, Tito Francona. Batting second, the second baseman, Felix Milan. Batting third, the, the center fielder, Felipe Alou. Batting fourth, the right fielder, Hank Aaron. Batting 5th, the catcher, Joe Torrey. Batting 6th, the left fielder, Mike Lum. Batting 7th, the third baseman, Cleet Boyer. Batting 8th, the shortstop, Sonny Jackson. And batting ninth, our starting pitcher for Atlanta, the knuckleballer, Phil Necro. All right, so uh, now all these numbers here are... The amount that they contribute to the overall defensive grade. So for Atlanta, Lum is a minus two. So he actually takes away from the grade. He's not a very good fielder there. But they didn't have much else. And he's a left-handed batter too. So that was to his credit. Uh, you can see Alou in center is a good defensive player. He has an 11. Hank Aaron is good for a right fielder. Five. Francona is a zero. Felix Milan is a good 17. Jackson is actually minus two, and that's really bad when you're shortstop. Most of the shortstops I've seen here contribute something like Milan does, 17 to the to the overall score, but he takes off two, so that's really bad. Cleet Boyer was always a good fielder at third base. He's a four. Phil Necro, Necro is an outstanding fielder. He's a nine. And Joe Torre behind the plate is a minus one. And there's also another rating, if you have an eye for a catcher, that takes that means he has a great arm behind the plate. And Joe Torre has a D, so he doesn't have a very good arm as well. So he's mostly there for his bat. Now uh, those always add up to a 44. And what that does is when you roll a 12 or a 14, it, no matter what the result, the defense takes over and changes it to an out. The dice is not a pure six-sided die. Uh, I think it's a maximum five or a zero. So it's like take off one chit of the die to get to a 
Dombrov die. Uh, except for the black one, which is either one, two, or three. So you'll see that in a minute. So let's get this game underway. Phil Necro is the pitcher, and he's going to start the knuckleballs. And here we have a first result, three and 31. You add these together, that's four. So this is a 34 result, and it passes off to the batter. That's what the green means. It goes to the batter, which is what happens probably at least half the time. Now, there's a possibility for the ballpark to take effect. Fulton County Stadium was known as the launching pad, so that means it's a very offensive ballpark. So if the ballpark effect comes into effect, there will be a double, but we'll see that in a second. So it goes to the batter, and the batter, Marinville, the rabbit, he gets a base hit. That's what the one plus means. So his 28 on his card was a base hit. So he gets to first base, and he has a three, so that's the highest rating runner. And, oh, no, there isn't. There's a four. Buster Chatham is a four. I've never seen a four before. Of course, I've only been playing this game for a couple weeks, so I haven't seen it all. So the whole team on the Boston Braves of 1930 were very fast runners, except for Sox Seabold, who's a zero, and Freddie McGuire still is a two. That's pretty good. You look on the other team... Uh, the Atlanta Braves, only Hank Aaron can run, and Sonny Jackson. So we are going to, we're playing as, well, I didn't even know, I don't know if I set it up. Game settings. Okay, I'll set this, um, I don't know if you see this window. I am playing as the visitor, although I am the lineups for both teams. So we'll give the home team gameplay to the Atlanta Braves. I don't know what that did to my recording. We shall see. I'll just check in a second. I think it's still recording. Yes, that's good. So, let's get this one going. So, uh, he's on first. We're going to try to steal a base. He has a 68% chance. He's going to go. And here's the roll. And Marinville makes it. The runner is safe. Rabbit is on second base. So, we have a runner in scoring position here in the first inning for Lance Richburg. Richborg. He batted 304 in 1930, which is pretty much average for 1930. Looks good today, but that's pretty much average. I think there are, there's some teams in the in, in that average three over 300 as a team. I don't think Boston's one of them, however. He hit three home runs and 54 RBIs. Let's see if we can get one here. Okay, it's passed on to the batter again, and he flies out to Felipe Alou for the out, one away. Brings up Wally Berger. He is the star. 310, 38 home runs, 119 RBIs. And if you study 1930s baseball, you will read a lot about Wally Berger. He was on a horrible team or a bad team. We'll want to put them worse than they were. He was on a bad team, but he was the big star of the Braves throughout the 30s. And it's to his bat, so this is a good chance. And But he flies out. Or there's a line out in this case to Francona. There's two away for George Sisler. Sisler, of course, uh, was a great hitter in the early 20s. He batted 400, I think it was 1922. And here he batted 309 with three home runs and 67 RBIs. And it's on the batter's card again. And he gets a base hit. So will he score? Yes. Rabbit scores. And we are up. One to nothing over this, the Atlanta Braves. And Sister can run. We're going to steal again. Might as well with two out. And here's the result. And Sister is going to steal second base. That three... Rating is going to come in handy in this game. So here's the catcher, Al Sporer. Batted 317 with two home runs and 37 RBIs. So the Braves take an early, the Boston Braves take an early lead. And it's a ground ball. You can see here it's a red. Red is bad if you're the batter. And if there was a runner on first and less than two out, that would have been a double play. But the first inning is over, the half inning. And it's Boston 1 and Atlanta coming up. Tito Francona, father of the Cleveland Indians manager, Tony Francona, who played for the Expos. So, uh, but his dad was uh, probably a better hitter than he was. 
So let's we'll see what happens. Okay, so it turns yellow. That means on Seabold's card, this was a walk. And you see Seabold, he was a 412 ERA, which is pretty good for 1930. Uh, he walked more than he struck out, which is pretty much standard as well. He gave up 288 hits and 251 at bats. So it's going to be a challenge for him to keep this lead. And Francona is on, brings up Felix Milan who was a good fielding and pretty decent bat second baseman in the 60s and early 70s. He's going to his card, and he's going to hit into a double play. Maguire to Marinville to Sisler. One, two, three. I guess it's four, six, three. Double play. So the threat is pretty much quenched at this point. Here's Felipe Alou. Any batter over 300 in 1968 was marvelous. In fact, there was in the American League, there was only one batter who batted over 300 in the American League in 1968, and that was Carl Yastrzemski of the Red Sox. Several batters did it in the National League, and Felipe was one of them. And now here's a X result, which means always when you roll a 38, you get the X result. And what that is, it's either a pass ball a wild pitch, a hit by a pitch. Uh, the only one that will affect here because there's nobody on base is if he gets hit here. Let's see if he gets hit. No, it's a wild pitch, but it doesn't matter because there's nobody on base. So this time goes to Felipe and he grounds out to Rabbit and the inning's over. So after one inning, it's Boston one, Atlanta nothing. Now, if you remember, the, the rules are the same no matter which game I use. One of the qualifications for me to use a game is I have to control the substitutions for both teams because the pitcher comes out after five innings and then a reliever comes in for one inning. He must stay for one inning. So there's no of this. I have to outsmart myself with the lefty-righty matchup. I just put in what I see is the best appropriate reliever and then I can fiddle with the batting as much as I want but so I have to have so Phil has four more innings to go and it's going to the batter Jimmy Walsh who pops up it flies out the center field looked like a pop-up but it was a fly out Buster Chatham he's a fastest runner I've seen so far he's a four so here we go he goes to his card and he's gonna fly out to Hank Aaron two away Freddie McGuire. See, some of these guys at the bottom did not hit 300. They hit 267 in the case of McGuire. And he flies out or lines out to the shortstop. And the second inning is over for Boston. Here's Hank Aaron. This is one of his weaker seasons. Of course, it's understandable because this was the year of the pitcher. But still, it was pretty good. 287, 29 home runs, 86 RBIs. That would be a great season for just about anybody else. But for Hank, it was below his standards. It's on his card. He's going to get a base hit. Base hit to right. And they're going to try a stolen base. So here we go. Let's see if they make it. And Hank is in there. And the fans like that one. So Hank Aaron's on second base with nobody out. It brings up Joe Torrey, 271, 10 home runs, 55. And it's going to be a walk. So two men on. Seabold is in trouble. Mike Lum, 224 hitter. Let's see if we can get him out. Another walk. The bases are loaded. Nobody out. Cleet Boyer. What might get us out of this is the Cleet Boyer and Sonny Jackson are not very good. Okay, it's on Boyer's card. He's going to ground out. That should score a run, however. No, he's going home. Nice play by Chatham to go home. So it's still one to nothing, Boston. Now we need the double play. Sonny Jackson's up. He batted 226. It's on his card. It's a fly out. Will it be a sacrifice fly? Nope, it was too shallow. So we might wiggle out of this one. Phil Necro's a 104 hitter. It's on his card. Would have been a double play, but there's two outs, so we're out of the inning. 
Bases loaded, nobody out. But like I said, it was the bottom of the order and we escaped because of that. So Sox Seabold is up. He batted 211 in 1930. And uh, could be, get hit by a pitch. He does. He's bonked and he'll take one for the team. And he is on, but he's a stolen base zero, so we're not going to try. If we did, it would be a 35% chance, which we will not do. So here's the rabbit. Now, one thing, uh, he had a base hit in the first inning and scored the only run of the game so far. Uh, we could bunt with him. His bunting, the whole team are good bunters, as typical in those old days where they taught fundamentals, unlike today. So any of everybody on the team could bunt, but uh, should we bunt? Might as well. We'll get him. 69% chance of bunting. Here we go. He's successful sacrifice. So now we have a man in scoring position for Lance Richborg. He is 0 for 1. It's on his card. He flies out, or lines out in this case, to Lum. There's two away, and here's Wally Berger. So if I was the... Manager of 68 Braves, I'd walk him, but we'll see what they do. They're not going to walk him, but he hits into a ground ball. And that's the end of the inning. After two and a half, it's still Atlanta 1, Boston, or sorry, Boston 1, Atlanta nothing. Tito Francona, fly ball to Welsh in center, makes the play, one away. Felix Milan, ground ball. To the pitcher, two away. Felipe Alou, fly ball, line out actually, and through three, it's still one to nothing. George Sisler, he strikes him out. Al Sporer, ground ball to the pitcher, two away. Jimmy Welsh gets a base hit. He's on. And we are going to try to steal a base. See what we can do. Yes, it looks positive. It looks positive. Man in scoring position for Buster Chatham. 267 hitter, 5 home runs, 56. He's 0 for 1 today. It's on his card, but he grounds out. And the inning's over. So it's still 1 to nothing. Here's Hank Aaron. He leads off. That's You want him to lead off an inning. You don't want him on up to bat with men on. And he grounds out, one away. Brings up Joe Torre. He's gonna walk. Ballpark, if the ballpark effect would have taken effect, it would have been out of here. Okay, here's Lum. He, it's on the D, see? Because the Braves have 38 points in total, it takes 12 and 13 RD, but this is not, this is 14. So if they would have had a 14 like the Braves, the 68 Braves do, it would have been an automatic out. But now it'll go to the batter's card, and but it's out anyway. He flies out to Welsh in center. Two away, Cleet Boyer. Ground ball. So we're through four innings. Still one to nothing in favor of the Boston Braves. Freddie McGuire. Here's the last inning for Phil Necro. Fly ball. He's pitching well. He just uh, gave up a run in the first inning. That was it. Seabold. Ground ball. Two away. And Rabbit. He's done most of the damage for Boston. Could have been defense, but it's 1-5. And that it's only 12-14 and 14 that takes it away. So he'll... Be on Rabbit's card, but he pops out anyway. Okay, so Phil Necro is done. He's only given up three hits and one run. Here's Sox. With Sonny Jackson. He's going to walk. And now... Oh, well, we'll say no because they can bring in a pinch hitter. So line up. I don't know if you can see the screen. will be quick. I don't want to bore you now. I'm just going to pick a pinch hitter. I think we're going to pick, let's see, we're going to pick, we're going to pick Sandy Valtespino. And I have to select pinch hitter. And here we go. I hope that wasn't too dull. 
Okay, so he's a three runner, but it doesn't look like they want to. They want to uh, steal. They wanted a bunt, but he's not a very good bunter. He's a, a B. So let's see what they do. No, they're gonna let him. So I took away their strategy, but they might as well pinch hit because Sandy hits one way out of here in center field. Pinch hit home run for Valdespino. And the 68 Braves are up 2-1. to one. So they finally get to Sox Seabold in the fifth inning. Here's Tito Francona. Now the Atlanta Braves have the lead. And he lines out to Berger. Now it's Felix Milan. Grounds out to Buster. Two away. Felipe Alou. He lines out. Oh, no. Let's see what this says. It's a fly ball to center field. Welsh can't make the play. Alou is on base after the error by Walsh. So the error rating came into effect here. So Welsh, who's probably the best fielder on the team, makes an error. So Alou is on base for Hank Aaron. They could extend their lead here. Let's see if they do. He drives it deep to left. It is gone. Hank Aaron hits a two-run homer. So the fifth inning is disastrous for Sox Seabold. He gives up two two-run homers, and the Atlanta Braves are up four to one. And he walks him. How many times has he walked Joe Torre in this game? Let's see. We can look at the... I don't think you can see this. But... Uh, Joe Torre has walked three times in this game. He's a walking machine. And mercifully, this inning is finally over. Okay, so Atlanta is going to bring in a pinch or a uh, relief pitcher now. And up are three left-handers. So they are going to bring in a left-handed pitcher. And that left-handed pitcher will be... A man by the name of Dick Kelly. Dick Kelly will come into the game. Dick Kelly was a 276 ERA. So he was a very good relief pitcher. Probably more than a loogie. And the defense comes through there. It was 11 and 11 takes away anything. So here's Wally Berger. He is 0 for 2, just after I built him up so much. This time he walked. They need some base runners. And I don't think, since we're three runs behind, I'm not going to steal any bases. Brings up Sisler. Sisler's card. Sisler gets a base hit to left. And we'll, it's one out, so we are going to try to get the third. Braves are trying to advance. Let's see if we get there. He is safe, and Sisler goes to second. So we got two men in scoring position. We need to get back in this game. Here's Al Sporer. He is 0 for 2. He's due. And he's going to get on with a walk. The bases are going to be... No. No, something happened there. First was a walk. But because it was a 38, I guess, it went to the batter's card. And he got a two-run single. That's much better than a walk. And it's now 4-3 to three, Atlanta. So Dick Kelly is not doing the job. Jimmy Welsh is up. One out. We are going to try to steal. Here we go. Uh-oh. He's going to be picked off. Gets picked off. We draw the P result. And that's it for our base runner. I guess we gave him the must steal sign instead of the steal sign. And the inning's over. But we got within one run. Now Seabold is done. And we will see. Oh, I should check first of all who is up. We got uh, Cleet Boyer, Sonny Jackson. So it's the bottom of the lineup. They're very bad. And a pinch hitter. So we will bring in not our best pitcher at this point. So we will bring in... Uh, we got a left-hander by name of Ed Brandt, who's horrible. The whole team is pretty bad. Shirtle's probably the three bottom guys here are okay. We'll bring in Bruce Cunningham. Bruce Cunningham, he's 
one of the worst pitchers we've got, so we'll bring him in. Bruce Cunningham, he was a 548 ERA. But he's going to face the bottom of the order, so hopefully he can get through this inning with unscathed. It's to the batter. He's got to strike him out. One away. Sonny Jackson's up. And then a pinch hitter. Jackson grounds out to McGuire. Two away. Now it's time for a pinch hitter. Oh, yes. Okay, so who are we going to bring in for the Brave or the Atlanta Braves? We've got Tommy Aaron. We'll bring in Hank's brother, Tommy. Pinch hitter, play. There he is, Tommy Aaron. We'll face Bruce Cunningham with two out here in the sixth inning. And he gets, Aaron flies out to center field. And home, line, home lineup positions are incomplete. So up for, so they're the bottom of the order. We can bring in a right-hander to face them. We will bring in Ken Johnson. Ken Johnson, the right-hander, will come into the game. 347 ERA and 135 innings pitched. Ken Johnson faces Buster Chatham. And it's a 12, so doesn't go to the defense. But it's a ground ball anyway. Felix Milan makes the play, throws the Francona. There's one away here in the seventh inning. Atlanta leads by one. Freddie McGuire is up. 3-3. Three, three. Double play ball. Nobody on base, so it's just a ground ball. Two away. And that's it for Bruce Cunningham. We'll bring in a uh, pinch hitter with two out, nobody on. So we won't bring in our best. We will bring in Earl Clark. Oh, he's a pretty decent fielder, so we'll save him. Uh, we will bring in a left-hander, Red Rollings. Red Rollings will come in to pinch hit. With two out here in the seventh inning, we need a run. We need base runners. At Red Rollings is 236, but he's a left-handed batter. That's why he's in the game. It's to his bat, and he grounds out, so he doesn't do anything. Sonny Jackson throws him out. With two, six and a half. And therefore, we get the song. Hopefully, this is not copyrighted. Four right-handers coming off after a left-hander, so we'll bring in a man by the name of Bob Smith. Bobby Smith is coming into the game. He was a 4.26 ERA. He's one of the starters, probably the number three starter of the Boston Braves. Bob Smith face Tito Francona, who is he's walked once, but he's 0 for two. And it went on Bob Smith card, an automatic ground ball out. One away for Felix Milan. He's 0 for 3. And he's going to, well, see, I'm going to fooled again. Should be a walk, but we'll see what the result is. No, it is a walk this time. So Felix Milan is on with a walk, and their two best hitters are coming up. Felipe Alou is 1 for 3. He gets a base hit. Milan is going to stop at second, and it's going to bring up Hank Aaron. You know what he did last time up. He had a two-run homer smash down the left field line. Wally Berger just watched it go. Did he not even move? This time he's going to hit to a double play. One to McGuire, to Sisler, inning over. So that was a good result for us. Ken Johnson, you're done. We're going to bring in, we got, uh, should look at who's up. We got three left handers coming up, so we're going to bring in a left hander. And our left hander will be George Stone. George Stone is coming into the ball game. There's George, he's a 276 ERA. One of their key left handers out of the bullpen. Here's Rabbit. Rabbit is one for two. He has a stolen base and scored a run. Here comes the pitch from Stone. Rabbit has got an infield hit. A little nubber. And he's on. And should we bunt? 
or should we steal? We've had pretty good luck, although we got picked off that last time. I think uh, we need someone on for burger. We are going to bunt. Here we go. Got a successful sacrifice. Got the man in scoring position for Wally Burger. Will they put him on? I would. But let's see what they do. They should have put him on because he hits it deep and he hits it far and it is gone. Wally Berger puts Boston back in front five to four here in the eighth inning. We can hit our own two run homers. So George Stone gives one up. He's got a 54.505 ERA. Not very good. George Sisler. Grounds out. We don't even mind. We're up. The only question is, do we have pitchers to uh, hold this lead? Sporer. Let's strike him out. So it's 5-4 Boston. They got Torrey, Lum, Cleet Boyer. If we have a left-hander, it's time. So line up. Uh, we do have some left-handers. We got uh, Eddie Brandt. We got Bill Shirtle. And Tom Zachary, they're, relatively speaking, they're not bad. So we will bring in Tom Zachary. Tom Zachary will come in. 4.58 ERA. For 1930, it's not bad. Anything, I'd say around 4.5 ERA and down is not bad. Joe Torrey is up. We might see some pinch hitters here, though. We have to play it straight. Okay, here's Torrey. He's walked three times. Let's see if we can get him out for a change. No, he gets a base hit to left. He's on. Brings up Blum. We are going to put in a pinch hitter for him. We'll bring in... He's a left fielder. So we'll look at left fielders available. We got Tommy Aaron who went before. So we'll bring in anybody. And then we'll pinch hit and put a fielder in. So we'll bring in a right-hander that has not batted. Gil Garrido. Uh, Bob Tillman. Sure, we'll bring in Bob Tillman. He's pretty good. So Tillman will pinch hit for Lum, the right-hander. There's Tillman. They're going to attempt a bunt. I bring in someone for you, and you're going to bunt. Okay, well, that's what your choice is. And he gets a successful sacrifice, so that's smart. You got a runner in scoring position. You didn't need to use a pinch hitter for that, but oh well. Now it's uh, Cleet Boyer. Cleet Boyer is 0 for 3. He struck out once. Zachary takes a peek at Torrey. Throws it. Ground ball of Buster. And it is successful. Two away. Torrey still on second. He did not advance. It looked like he was advancing, but he did not advance. Because the ball was hit to the third baseman. Brings up Sonny Jackson. They are going to bring in a pinch hitter. We're going to bring in Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson, the pinch hitter. He had a long career in the major leagues. And it's to Darren Johnson's card. He's going to pop out to the catcher. And that's it. For the Braves in the eighth, after eight innings, the score is Boston five, Atlanta four. Okay, so we got some uh, fielders to bring in here. We got to bring in a shortstop. We will bring in Marty Martinez to play short. Marty Martinez is a little bit better shortstop than, than Sonny Jackson. And we have to bring in a left fielder for uh, the pinch hitter Lum. And we will bring in, we already used him. We already used him, we already used him. The only one left is Mike Page. So we can't pinch hit for him, otherwise we won't have a left fielder. We've used them all as pinch hitters. He's all, he's a zero, so at least he doesn't take anything away from their fielding score. Okay, so Stone is out of the game. And we'll, so looking at who's up, Jimmy Welsh, and then two right-handers. So we'll just bring in a right-hand. We used pretty much all the left-handers that the Atlanta Braves had. 
So we are going to bring in Cecil Upshaw. Cecil Upshaw will come in. Right-handed pitcher. George Stone. Yes, well... I don't know what they're meaning here. Jimmy Welsh is up. Okay, here we go. We're in the ninth inning. This is the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. It's a 31 ground ball. Boyer to Francona, one away. Next is Buster. Buster is 0 for 3. And he gets a base hit up the middle. And he's on. And he's a fast, fast runner. We're going to try to steal. He's a 74% chance. Here we go. No problem. He is the fastest man alive, so of course he's going to steal the base. And uh, so we have a runner on sc in scoring position with one out for Freddie McGuire. And we have a possible wild pitch or pass ball or hit by pitch. It is hit. So that's kind of a break for Atlanta because a wild pitch would have got the runner to third. Zachary is up. We're going to bring in a pinch hitter. And we probably have lots to choose from. This is a good hitting team. We have Johnny Newen. Oh, he is good. It's Johnny time. Switch hitter. Batting 327 against right-handers. Oh, I didn't uh, put pinch hitter. There we go. He's pinch hitter. There he is. Johnny Newen. 325 hitter. Exactly the man we want up. Let's get some insurance. Base hit to left. Chatham will score. Now we have a choice here. Attempt for third base for runner from first. He's a two runner. Chance of success 60%. We will say no. Here's Rabbit. Rabbit is two for three. So he is hot and that's why I didn't send him. Because... Uh, 60% chance. That means a 40% chance of being thrown out. Here we go. Ground ball. That's no double play. Just a force out. Second. Brings up Lance. He's 0 for 3. And he strikes out. So, here it is. We got a two-run lead. Do we have a pitcher? Is capable. So we have a pinch hitter. And... A left-handed hitter and a bunch of right-handers. So we're going to bring in a right-handed pitcher. The best one we've got. we got Bob Smith. Burley Grimes. No, not Burley. He's got a 7 ERA. And Ben Cantwell. I think we used Bob Smith already. Yes, we did. So we're going to bring in Ben Cantwell. He's probably the best we've got left. There, it's up to you, Ben. So he's going to face, now we're going to bring in a pinch hitter for Atlanta. Let's see who, there's not, we've used just about everybody. we got Wayne Causey, only bats 111. Gil Garrido. we got Walt Reniak. That, yep, yeah, he's the one. He's batting 316 against right-handed pitching. So Walt Reniak, the, probably the most famous hitting coach in history. Like you asked George Brett. He helped George Brett be a Hall of Famer. Too bad he, well, he hit pretty well this year. But he, uh, he taught better than he hit. Let's put it that way. Okay, so let's see what Ben Cantwell can hold this two-run lead. Ground ball to McGuire, one away. Brings up Francona. Francona's 0 for 3, but he's walked once. And it's the Park Effect fly out. That out was courtesy of the Park Effects at Atlanta Stadium. Usually it's a launching pad, but in this case, it helped the visiting Boston Braves with a fly out. We're down to the last hitter, Felix Milan, 0 for 3 with a walk. They want desperately to get a man on for Felipe Alou and Hank Aaron. And they do. Felix Milan singles up the middle. What clutch hit that was. It brings up Felipe. He is one for four. And how he would like to get on base to put the winning run at the plate in the form of Hank Aaron, who's already hit one out today. 
And he does, he walks. Oh, Ben. Ben is quivering on the mound as he has to face the great home run hitter, Hank Aaron. He's two for four with a home run and two RBIs and a stolen base and a run scored. Well, of course, if you hit home run, you will get a run scored. But I'm just trying to make it sound impressive, which it is. Okay, it's on his card. He doubles. Will he score two? Elite Alu goes home and it's tied at six. Still not out of it. Joe Torrey is up. He is one for one with three walks. Mike Page. We don't know what kind of hitter Mike Page is. Maybe we should put him on. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Is there a way I can intentionally. Yes, intentional walk. We want to face Mike Page. Because Mike Page, yes, is a 179 hitter. Here we go. He is out. But the damage is completely done. We are tied at six. I'm going to run out of pitchers here. Okay. So Berger, Sisler, and Sporer. But at this point, we're just... Who do we have left? Jim Britton. Jim Britton will come into the game. Now, of course, the last pitcher in the game goes as long as the game lasts. 6-6 six, six tie. Wally Berger, who's homered last time up. He is one for three with two runs scored and a walk. And he strikes out. Britton comes through against the big hitter of the Boston Braves. Here we are in the 10th inning. Sisler grounds out. And Sporer. Sporer grounds out. To the pitcher of all people. So that's it for, for Boston. Now we got to bring in a pitcher. We got the bottom of the order. So let's, we can afford perhaps to bring in a weak pitch. We don't want the last pitcher to be weak. I don't know how many, how many pitchers do we have left? Not many. We got, uh, we have Ed Brandt. Yes. Okay. He is a 501 ERA. We use Cantwell. We use Cunningham. We got Frank, Frank House. No, Fred Frank House. We got Burley Grimes, who is the worst. Bill Shirtle. Okay, we got Bill Shirtle. He's pretty good. We're going to save him. Okay, so we're going to bring him Burley Grimes right now and get him over with. This could be risky, but it's a bomb the order. That's why we're doing it. So, Cleet Boyer, who is 0 for 4 with a strikeout against Burley Grimes. Burley Grimes was a great pitcher in the early 20s but he's clearly over the hill at this point ground ball to mcguire one away brings up marty martinez he's the new shortstop switch hitter batting 230. he walks that was on burley grimes they are going to attempt a bunt well i'm going to bring in a pinch hitter well maybe i won't i'll save a pinch hitter for them they don't have many left. So we'll let them bunt. Yes. So let's we'll see if the result is. I thought they were going to bunt. He pops out. They said they wanted to bunt, and I said yes. Okay, here is Francona. He walks, so it doesn't matter. Still the same result if you had a pop out and a walk versus a bunt and a walk. So brings up Felix Milan. He was the hero last inning when he got on base with two out to set it up for Hank Aaron. Let's see if he can do it again. And it's a base hit, Burley Grimes. So it was a bad move bringing in Burley Grimes. It was on his card. It was a walk-off win for the 68 Braves. Game over. I don't even know if you could see the uh, box score. If you can... You can see this window, I don't know. But anyway, the star of the game was clearly Hank Aaron. Three for five, a home run, and four RBIs. The winner of this game was Jim Britton. And the loser was Burley Grimes. Well, that's Dom Brav Baseball. Now you cannot say that you've never seen Dom Brav Baseball because now you have. And I just want to put in a little plug for it. Yeah, it's maybe not as polished as some other games, but you uh, 
You can download for free. Um, you can play it unlimited for free. There's just some limitations to it. You can have only, uh, I believe, five uh, seasons that you download for free that you can have at one time. But if you pay $20 to support Mr. Dombrovsky, this is short of his name, Dombrov for Dombrovsky, if you give him 20 bucks, you can have uh, all these seasons pretty much downloaded for free and you'll have a lot of fun and the game is good. And uh, yeah, I recommend it. And it's cheaper than most of the other games that you'll see here. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the game here for the final score. It's a, the Atlanta Braves 7 and the Boston Braves 6. This is King Ikibu coming to you live from Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. We'll see you next time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.